through life and the world that we're living in and we get tired sometimes, we get seem like overwhelmed by things that's going on around us. I believe God has a solution for that. We understand in the natural what it's like to be thirsty, right? And you get a good drink of water, all that refreshing. We know what it's like to be tired. Jesus got tired, right? We know what it's like to be tired. And then we get a good night's rest. And we call that, I'm being refreshed, right? I am persuaded that we need a good spiritual refreshing in the church. Amen? Being refreshed. That's what I want to talk to you about for a little while this morning. We have been talking about God being a God of restoration. And it's throughout the Bible. Ever since man fell in the Garden of Eden, God has a plan plan of redemption of where he is restoring man back to the place where he created us to be. Amen. I'm so thankful that God is willing to restore man, aren't you? Scripture I want to start with this morning is found in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, we read here verse 1. It begins with the word and. Now normally, we don't just begin every sentence with the word and, do we? No, we probably have said something before and. So we're adding to it here. And what is being added to here in the book of 1 Kings is that there were kings over Israel. Gives a big list of them. Uh, and then it says here in verse 17, verse 1, and... Elijah, I find this man a very interesting prophet of God, right? He was a Tishbite. He was a Tishbite with a bite. He was a prophet. When Elijah spoke, it had some bite to it. Man, he was not one of those kind of prophets that just sent out words meaninglessly. I mean, he spoke the word of God, the word of the Lord in power and also with demonstration. Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, Ahab being the king of Israel. Now, you don't get a lot of build up here of Elijah. I mean, he just come on the scene, hit the ground a running. Amen. <laughs> I, I, you know, it speaks of John the Baptist. You know, the forerunner of Jesus being somewhat similar. I mean, we know how John was born and things of that nature. We, give, we have the record. But when John the Baptist come on the scene, he was out in the wilderness preaching repentance, right? 
and baptize him. Now, but here we see Elijah coming on the scene, going right to the king. This is the first account we have of the man going right to the king Ahab. And here's what he says. As the Lord God of Israel liveth. Israel was supposed to believe in the Lord God. So that wasn't anything out of the ordinary. But here's what the prophet said. He said, I'm standing right now before the Lord God of Israel. And here, king, listen. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. I tell you what, it takes some gumption to come on in front of the king and make some statement like that, doesn't it? That takes boldness. It takes knowing who you are and whose you are and knowing that you are speaking the words of the Lord God of Israel. Hmm. Now, I tell you what, that was quite an entrance, wasn't it? Now, there was a drought three and a half years drought brought upon the nation of Israel the reason it came was because of disobedience and idolatry Israel were committing those Sins against God. Now, it tells us here, after Elijah spoke those words to Ahab, in verse 2, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So Elijah went and did according to the word of the Lord. He dwelt there. The ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. You know, a drought brings a lot of Disaster, right. It's a famine. It's a lack of water. Things of this nature. God was providing for his prophet Elijah. Now, in verse 7, it says, And it came to pass after a while. Now, we don't know exactly how long that while was since God had him to go to the brook but it was some people think that it could have been for even two years we don't know but he spent a while there the Bible says and after a while that brook dried up because there had been no rain in Israel makes sense right now, God miraculously, I want you to get that this morning, even during times of famine, times of great distress, God can still sustain us. He can take care of us. Amen. He did Elijah. Now, he may have to do it miraculously, but God specializes in that, right? Okay. Now, if you look on down here, it tells about um, uh, there was a widow woman 
uh, at Zarephath and uh, and the famine was sore in the land and people were running out of food. But it tells us here that God used as the woman sustained Elijah. We won't go into these stories, but they're fascinating stories. How God uh, was sustaining Elijah through this woman, baking him a cake, giving him something to eat, and God supernaturally, miraculously, verse 16 said that the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail in the house of this woman, according to the word of the Lord which uh, he spoke by Elijah. So, more miracles coming to pass. We see here also... Uh, where the uh, uh, the woman's son died, and God used the prophet Elijah to bring him back to life. Right. So the point here is, don't limit God. Even in time of famine or disaster, God is still. Willing and he specializes in doing those things for us. Now, if we go over to or down to chapter 18, here's what it says And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Now that would have been the third year after Elijah spoke those words that we just read in chapter 17, verse 1. Three years the drought had been on. And the word of the Lord said to him, Go show yourself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now let me tell you something. You get in a three-year drought, you're ready for some rain, right? I mean, that's, that's dire. That's, that's terrible conditions. Now, as we noted, the New Testament bears it out. Book of James, Book of Luke, different ones bears it out that actually uh, the drought lasted three and a half years, 42 months. Same thing. Okay, now, if we go on down after Elijah had spoke these words to the king, and uh, look in verse 17 of chapter 18. And when Elijah met Ahab, here's what the king said to him. And it came to pass, Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said, Art thou he who troubleth Israel? Now, I find that interesting how carnal-minded people look at things like this and said, you know, that's where the problem is. Sometimes people don't know where the problem is. They just think they know what the problem is. It's hard to solve a problem unless you know what the problem is. All Ahab could think about is somebody is troubling Israel. See, he knew, as we read, he knew it was Elijah said, King, it ain't going to rain till I say it's going to rain. And Ahab started to believe in that. After three years, he ought to, right? So you're troubling Israel. You brought a disaster upon us. Here's what Elijah said, verse 18. He said, I've not troubled Israel. (laughs) It's you (laughs) that troubles Israel. See, Ahab was not a good king, okay? You know that. It's you and your father's house in that you have what? Forsaken the commandments of the Lord And you have followed Baal. Wow. That was a strong indictment. 
In other words, what he's saying is that's the cause of Israel's problem. In fact, I could go on record this morning saying this. Every nation that ever existed on the face of this earth, when they've had problems, it's due to things just like that. Hmm? That's right. Every nation's problems, you can trace back, there's a cause. And it's a bad cause. Okay. Now, let's go on down here to verse... uh, 19, we find that uh, (laughs) Elijah made a challenge. This is a wonderful example of how God can use somebody to put down the opposition. And the challenge was, verse 19, he said, Therefore send and gather me all of Israel unto Mount Carmel. And he said, of the prophets of Baal, 450, and of the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. See, Jezebel being Ahab's wife, she had her own uh, prophets, right? False prophets, they be, but she had her own prophets so it says in verse 20 Abraham gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel that may have taken a little while but you know Elijah was used to waiting it wasn't anything that oh I got to get this show on I got to get it done you know no I'm I'm going to wait you just get them together and you you get them up here on Mount and we'll then we'll proceed from there All right, now here's what Elijah said as the forces were being assembled for the contest. (laughs) Oh, what a battle. I mean, uh, yeah. He said to them in verse 21, the people of Israel said, How long are you going to halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Now, we won't go into the story, but it's good reading. When you want to read about it, you can go ahead and do that there. But anyway, we find he says here in verse uh, uh, 24, Um, he said, the one that answers by fire, let him be God. I love the way Elijah got specific. It wasn't just like, you know, uh, I will win by so many uh, points, you know. And it wasn't a bunch of judges judging the contest here. It was simply Elijah said, these are the rules. This is what's going to happen, and whoever wins, wins. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to take Jehovah over Baal any time. Man, he's never lost a battle. But God was using Elijah to make a point here. So let him be God, and the people said, that is well spoken. Now, if you drop on down here, It says, here's what the false prophets did. Verse 28, they cried aloud, they cut themselves after their manner with knives and and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Wow. Well, that's going to a lot of pain and agony to try to get your God to respond. I I don't know as we have to. No, we just come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. That sounds a lot easier, right? Now, so they Baal's prophets failed. They did not get an answer. 
I'm here to tell you this morning, America has too many gods. I'm talking a little G's here. We have too many gods. You might even find one of them in your uh, purse or wallet. It's called a dollar bill. Hmm? People worship a lot of things and make gods out of them. Right? So, America also has false religions. America also has ideologies that are contrary to the Word of God. They make a God out of it. Mm -hmm. And we know in America we have a challenge on our hand as believers that people and even in leadership are rejecting Bible truth. Do you know what's going to happen to every one of those? They are going to fail. Guaranteed, they're going to fail. Just like Baal's prophets failed, these things are also going to fail. And those things will not bring restor restoration to our country. Hmm? Now, Okay, we understand that uh, uh, if we go on down here uh, in verse 30, Elijah had his turn. Mm -hmm. You've done your display, let me do mine. And it tells us here where Elijah prepared his sacrifice. What's it going to take to get our nation back out? What's it going to take to get things restored the way it ought to be? As Elijah prepared his sacrifice, according to the word of the Lord, we need to prepare our hearts for a refreshing. Amen? God's not opposed to preparation. We need to prepare ourselves for revival, prepare our hearts for what God wants to pour out upon us. And we know that Elijah's God answered by fire. Amen? Verse 36, it tells us that it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, he was calling upon his God, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Can you imagine if we saw on TV our leaders get up and make a statement to the whole nation and say this, let it be known that the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of America. And I might fall out of my chair if I sat him down. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be ready for that. But that's exactly what they need to say. Amen. Verse 37 says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned uh -huh, their heart back again and the fire of the Lord fell and burnt the sacrifice just as Elijah said. Now, let, let me tell you something. God proved his point to Israel. He proved his point to the king, the queen, the false prophet. He proved it to everybody that he's Lord God. All right, sometimes you have to go through a dry spell. Oh, we don't like dry seasons, do we? No, I like rain. I like it the right way. I like the refreshing. I like all these things. <laughs> but let me tell you something. God, sometimes to get His point across, it's not always easy. 
But once he gets it across and gets people, as it says here, turning, turning, right? They turned, the, the people of Israel turned the right altar. You listening? They had all kinds of other altars of false gods. But when they turned to the altar that Elijah built, Oh, if America would turn back to the cross of Christ, that's a good altar. Amen. Right? Now, verse 41 is we're moving right through there, aren't we? Verse 41 says this. Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. The drought is going to be broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for a, a drought of spiritual uh, lethargy and and? An apostasy to be broken in our land. Amen. It's going to take a rain to break the drought. Amen. It's going to take something. It's going to take a rain. There is an abundance of rain. Now, there was a sound. Sound. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Boy, that sounds kind of like what happened there. Spirit came. Fell like rain. Did you know water is a type of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Fell like rain. Praise God. Now, back back to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44. And it came to pass... At the seventh time, you know, uh, um, verse 43, it said, uh, where he said to his servant, you know, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and there was nothing. He said, go again uh, seven times. And it says in verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said it. He said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea. Like a man's hand. And then he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down for the rain, that the rain stop thee not. Wow. Now, let me tell you, we need to look around today and determine what kind of clouds are gathering. Now you can turn on the news and you can see some of the clouds that are gathering. War clouds are gathering. Disaster clouds are gathering. Now that's looking at the world's horizon. I want to read you here in the Gospel of uh, St. Luke. Let's look at chapter 21. And this is Jesus prophesying of the last days. And here's what he says in Luke 21, verse 8. Take heed that you be not deceived. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. But go ye not therefore after them. We do have deceivers in the world today. But notice verse 9, And when you hear of wars and commotions, or as Matthew says, wars and rumors of wars, be not terrified, listen, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then in verse 10 he said, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Great earthquakes shall be in divers places, notice, and famines, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, oh, let's go on down here, verse 25, same chapter. And he said again, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth there will be distress of nations, we have it today, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. That's, I think, referring to the sea of humanity. And that's what we're seeing today, a sea of humanity, just back and forth like waves in the ocean. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. Amen? For fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And, and, here's a good and here. And when they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and with great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. We've got a choice to make. We can look at the news and see what clouds are building out here in the world. Or we can look into the Word of God and see what kind of promise clouds. <laughs> I just love that. See what kind of promise clouds that God has building for His church. Hallelujah. Man. Promise cloud. What are you looking for? Well, uh, See, see here, 20. Uh, well, let's see. Um, here's something else. We, we need to keep this in mind, church. We need to have a thirst for living waters like we've never had before. Amen? We need the refreshing of the latter rain like we've never had before. Luke 24, 49 says this, Behold, Jesus speaking, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is one of them promise clouds. Amen. What is the promise of the Father that he was talking about? He said, I will send the promise of the Father. He, tell, he told his disciples here before he ascended, Tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. day of Pentecost came. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what, Brother Jim, witnesses unto me. Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. God has an answer for our last day's dilemmas. Do you believe that? Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll try to 
get on with this here and find an end to it somewhere, I guess. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah right quick. Uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Look with me here. Verses 11 and 12. The prophet Isaiah says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. God says, I have a rest. I have a refreshing. Amen? You know what the Bible says? They wouldn't hear it. You got ears to hear this morning? Better listen. Somebody said, how do you know that's talking about the Spirit of God? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to the uh, book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. Do you know what the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians is talking about? Y'all up on that? It's talking about speaking in tongues. It's talking about prophecy. It's talking about the Holy Ghost moving and the right order to let Him move and bless in your life and in, even in, in a church service. Amen? Because people can take any spiritual gift. Did you know uh, the gift of tongues is uh, uh, one of the nine spiritual gifts? Amen? Did you know speaking in tongues is uh, a part of, should be a part of your prayer life? Do you understand that? Amen? All right. Let's go back to uh, confirm what we were talking about here. In 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14 and verse 21. And right here in this chapter that Paul is just hammering on the Holy Spirit and things in the church, he says, in the law it is written. What law? Book of Isaiah, chapter 28. This way. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, yet for all that will, they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which do believe. Amen. There's your confirmation of what he was talking about in the book of Isaiah. Right? Amen. Still with me? Okay. This is the rest. This is the refreshing that God has. We could talk more about that, but uh, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and, and, and wrap it up right here. If you want to turn with me to the book of Jude. Jude, we'll look first of all, verse 11. Now, I want us to bring this together by looking at it of what's going on in the world today. Jesus said would come, and it has. Things are still coming, and they will. But look at the things that's going on and what we're having to deal with as Christians in the world today. Verse 11, Woe unto them! Who are the them? People that we will find out here that are not obeying the word of the Lord. Woe unto them. 
For they have gone the way of Cain, who was Cain, a murderer, and ran greedily, <laughs> listen to this, after the error of Balaam. They do it for reward. And they are perished in the gain saying of court. He said, these are spots in their feast of charity. Then they feast with you, feeding themselves with fear. That's what's going on. Men's hearts failing them for fear of the things that's coming up. I think that could be the physical heart, but I think man's spirit's also called a heart, right? I believe man's spirits can be failing them. Amen? If they're not building them up, we'll talk about that just in a little bit. If we're not building ourselves up, our spirit can fail us. Mm -hmm. I'm just warning you. They said, they are clouds without water. They won't break a drought. You know, isn't that kind of frustrating? You're, you're dry, you need rain, you see a bunch of clouds, and not even, but maybe not even a sprinkle come out. You'd think, well, you worthless cloud. <laughs> we need rain. Hallelujah. Clouds without water. Why are they carried about of winds? Trees whose fruit withereth without a fruit. Twice dead and plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the seas form, foaming out of their own shame. Wandering stars. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. There's people in the world today that meet that description. That's what's out here to oppose the church of the living God. Right? But you know what? Enoch, the seventh, from Adam prophesied, The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, convince all who are ungodly, Convince them and convict them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. That's a lot of ungodliness, isn't it? And of all of the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, there's murmurers and complainers walking after their own lust, speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of its advantage. Mm-hmm. Mockers in the last time, walking after their own ungodly lust. They separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit of God. Here we go. We're wrapping it up right here. Listen. But you, beloved, you build yourselves up. Need some building up? You build yourselves up on your most holy faith. How do you do it? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And then he said, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord and Savior for Christ unto eternal life. Right? Now, you stand with me this morning. 